Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and today we're going to be doing Unit 8, Lesson 5 on Understanding the Pythagorean Theorem. Now this is our last lesson on the Pythagorean Theorem, and literally what we want to do in this lesson is show you why the Pythagorean Theorem is true. Now there's many what are known as proofs of the Pythagorean Theorem, literally hundreds of them. And we're just going to look at one today, and we're going to build it up you know, very like step by step by step. So hopefully you see at the end why in a right triangle, a squared plus b squared must be equal to c squared. All right, that being said, let's build some of the groundwork. Now, we can prove the Pythagorean theorem using the areas of rectangles and squares of all things. All right, so first let's do a bit of review in exercise number one. Find the area of each of the following. Leave in terms of a variable if needed. All right, so this is simple enough, right? You know, we can find the area of each one of these squares or rectangles by, of course, just multiplying length times width. It's that simple. So why don't you pause the video now and tell me what the area of each one of these is. Now, C and D, which have only variables and no numbers, you'll have to leave their areas in terms of those variables, and that's okay. Why don't you go ahead and do this? All right, well obviously for letter A, the area is just four times four, or four squared, and that'll be 16 square centimeters. All right, for letter B, that area is gonna be two times five, or just simply 10 square inches. And those are easy enough. Now for letter C, the area is just A times A, or maybe a little bit better, A squared. That's all I can do with that one. And for letter D, it's even less. It's like, like A times B, which I'm just gonna leave like this, A, B. All right, remember when I have two variables that just sort of sit beside each other like that, it's implying multiplication. So it's simple enough, right? If I've got any rectangle or square, a square is just a specialized rectangle, obviously. If I've got any rectangle, I can find its area by just doing this times this. And sometimes, when those side lengths are variables and not numbers, I just have to kind of leave it like that. You know, the area is a squared, or the area is a b, or a times b. All right, now, I want you to understand that, but I also want you to understand this. The area of any rectangle can be thought of as a product, and any product can be thought of as the area of a rectangle. All right, let's take a look at what I mean in exercise number two. For each of the following products, draw a rectangle or square and label it with the side lengths indicated by the product. All right, so in other words, I don't want you to tell me what seven times five is. I'm just claiming we can think of seven times five as being the area of a rectangle that is five this way and seven this way. Five what, seven what, I don't know, inches, centimeters, feet, it doesn't really matter, all right? That's all I want you to do. Draw pictures whose areas would be given by these expressions. Pause the video now and go ahead and do that. So six squared, right? That's six times six, right? We know that. In which case we could think about that as simply being the area of a square that's six by six, right? Now, something like this, x times y, or just xy, that could be thought of as the area of a rectangle that's x and y. Now remember, we are just building up the tools we're going to need to prove the Pythagorean theorem. And finally, c squared, right, which is just obviously c times c, this could be thought of as calculating the area of a square Right, that's C by C. All right, that's it. So let's just be clear, right? We can find the area of any rectangle or any square using a product, and any product really could be thought of as being the area of a rectangle or a square. Now let's make that bridge to the Pythagorean theorem. All right, we can now start to make connections to the Pythagorean theorem and the areas of squares and rectangles. Let's take a look at exercise three. 
A right triangle is shown below with sides of length A, B, and C. Squares have been drawn off each side of the triangle. Letter A. Write the areas of the squares inside of them. Express the areas in terms of the variables A, B, and C. All right. Well, that should be easy enough given what we just did. So why don't you go ahead and do that? What I want you to do is inside of each one of these squares, I'd like you to write what its area is in terms of the variables A, B, and C. Pause the video now and go ahead. Well, this square, right, this square has a side length of A and A, and therefore its area must be A squared, right? A times A, A squared. This square, which has side lengths of B and B, it has an area of B squared, and likewise, this bigger square has an area of C squared, all right? Now for letter B. How do these areas relate to the Pythagorean theorem? All right. Well, hopefully, this is starting to look a little bit familiar, right? The Pythagorean theorem, I'll just abbreviate it as PT, says that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So, right, um, square area, square area, and the square area. In other words, the Pythagorean theorem doesn't so much relate the lengths of the sides of a right triangle. It actually says if I draw this square and this square and I add their two areas together, that sum will equal the area of that square, right? That's actually what the Pythagorean theorem says. It's not so much about the side lengths, but the areas of squares attached to those side lengths, okay? And now, let's see why it's true, okay? Let's see why it's true. Here we go. Now, this is a lengthy problem, and I had to kind of stretch it out over the span of this page. Now, there are many ways to prove the Pythagorean theorem is true, but we will now concentrate on using areas to do so. So let me kind of bring this thing up to the top. All right, exercise number four. Two squares are shown below. Both squares have side lengths, sides with lengths A plus B. They have both been divided up into two different shapes. The first has been divided into two squares and two rectangles. The second has been divided up into four identical right triangles and one square. All right, now, again, let's just be very, very, very clear about this. I've got these two squares. They both have side lengths of A plus B, right? A plus B. I've just carved them up in different ways, right? In this way, I've got these two identical rectangles and then these two squares. In this one, I divided it up so that I have these four identical right triangles and then this one larger square that's sort of, if you will, skewed in the middle. Now, a very important thing to observe right from the beginning, I mean, this is really important. Why do the two squares have the same area? Or why must square one and square two have the same area? Pause the video now and explain to me why you would know that these two squares have the same area. Well, it's really as simple as this. They have the same side lengths, right? And that's really critical. They have the same side lengths. Right, those side lengths happen to be A plus B. Now you might be like, well, what's A and B? Whatever. Maybe A is three and B is four. Maybe A is seven and B is three. It really doesn't matter, all right? At the end of the day, this square has a, has a length of A plus B and A plus B, and this length has a square of A plus B and A plus B, right? And therefore, since they have the same side lengths, they've gotta have the same area inside of them because they are literally the same square. I could take this square and just lie it on top of this one, all right? Now, it's critical that you understand they have the same area, really critical. So let's take a look at letter B. 
For both squares, write the areas of the various smaller figures inside of them in terms of the variables a, b, and c. Also write the areas or the area below. All right, so, right, what I want you to do is in all four of these smaller shapes, write in their area in terms of a and b, and the same thing in here, although you'd also have to bring in the variable c. Keep in mind here, you do have four right triangles, so there's gonna be some one halves flying around as well. Pause the video now and try to fill in all those various areas and inside of the figure, and then maybe write them down as sums down here. Pause the video now and take a little bit of time. All right, well, square one's a little bit easier, right? First, let's take a look at this little square. It's A by A. So it's got to have an area of a squared. Likewise, the bigger square in there has got a side length of b, so it's b squared. Now these two rectangles are identical, and in fact, they've got a length of b and a width of a, so its area is a times b, and this one also has an area of a times b. All right, so in total, right, the area of square one would be a squared plus a b, plus AB, plus B squared. And we could combine these two and write them as two times AB, but we could also just leave them like that. Whatever, right? Now let's talk about square number two. Let's do the easy part first, the area of this big kind of tilted square in the middle. That thing's just C times C, so that's C squared. Now up here, we'd have to have one half base times height. So that's one half AB. This would also be one half AB, one half AB, and one half AB. So its area now would be, let's say, one half AB plus one half AB plus one half AB plus one half AB plus C squared. Now, keep in mind, right, that one half AB plus one half AB would just be AB. And one half AB plus one half AB would just be AB. So all of these would also be two times AB. But whatever, right? Now remember, this area and this area would have to be the same. Would have to be the same. But let's keep thinking about this in terms of areas. Let's take a look at letter C. The combined area of the four right triangles from square two is equal to the area of what two figures inside of square one? Show this by drawing in a single diagonal for each. All right, so again, make sure you understand this. I'm looking at square two. I claim that this right triangle, this one, this one, and this one, when I combine those four areas, it's equal to the area of two of the figures in here. Which two? Pause the video and think about that now, just, just based on, on geometry. Well, it's gotta be equal to the area of these two rectangles, right? Must be equal to the area of the two rectangles, right? So in other words, if I took this and I drew in these two diagonals, hopefully it's pretty obvious one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? Those two rectangles and these four right triangles have the same area. You can even see that up here with the formulas, right? These are those two rectangles, AB and AB, and each one of these is just half of that. So this area and this area must be the same. All right, so we're ready for the kicker? Letter D. Given your answer to C, what must the sum of the areas of the two squares in square one be equal to in square two? Write this equation. So again, I want you to just keep, keep this in mind, 
right? What we know for certain is we know, whoa, we know that we've got a lot of green up here. We know, <laughs> ah, funny, what happens with green screens? We know that these blue areas are the same, all right? Which means that a squared plus b squared, these two areas, must be equal to the area over there, which is c squared, right? a squared plus b squared must be equal to c squared. The magic of green screens. Pretend that these colors are actually, there we go. Somehow that, that almost worked out, but not quite. Anyway, whatever. Gray. They're gray. They're gray scale, right? These things are the same areas as these four blue triangles. And therefore, this area, which is a squared, plus this area, which is b squared, must be this area, which is c squared. And you can do that with any right triangle. You can construct a diagram that works like this, therefore giving you the Pythagorean theorem. You see, the Pythagorean theorem really is a theorem about areas. It's not actually a theorem about side lengths. And it just basically says, in a right triangle, the area of the square attached to one leg plus the area of the square attached to another leg is equal to the area of the square attached to the hypotenuse. Now you're going to get some practice with this general thinking on the homework and even there we'll give you some just normal numbers like A will have a number like 3 and B will have a number like 4 or something like that. And you'll get to really see how those areas kind of cancel out and how a squared plus b squared continues to be equal to c squared. All right. Now we'll get a plenty of use out of the Pythagorean theorem as we move into our next unit, which has to do with solid geometry. Things like spheres and cylinders and pyramids and prisms and all that good stuff from previous years. But now we'll have the Pythagorean theorem at our disposal to be able to solve a much wider variety of problems. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.